Okay, so in the previous video we essentially just set this model up um, for a one country model anyway, not talking about trade again yet. Uh, and we looked at how uh, we could work out um, the production of um, in both the sectors, in the in the food sector and the cloth sector. Uh, what we want to do now is we actually want to um, change the relative prices and have, have a look at how that might change the distribution of income and how that may or may not create winners and losers. So it's like a little first step, if you like, on looking at how um, ultimately trade can uh, change the uh, distribution of income and create winners and losers. Okay, so this is um, this first diagram here is um, the one that we had before from the from the previous video where we looked at the, the equilibrium wage um, given the, the marginal product of labour uh, in the cloth sector and in the food sector, and that by and in turn that determined how much labour was used in cloth and how much labour was used in food. So the question now is well what, what happens to wages? Uh, and hence the, the allocation of labour between the sectors, in other words, whether more goes into more labour goes into cloth or more into food, when the price of the goods change. And that's our that's if you like our first uh, step here. So here again, just starting off with what we had before, there's two scenarios. The first one's not all that interesting, but the sec but the, the second one is. So in this first scenario, let's assume that the price of both goods change in the same proportion, then actually nothing happens. Okay, the reason for this is you can see over here if we say increase uh, the price of uh, cloth and food by 10%, then uh, wages are going to rise by 10%. So, in other words, if you raise the price of a good, what's going to happen is the uh, this curve is going to shift. Okay, it's going to shift up if you like, it's probably a good way of looking at it, or shift to the right, doesn't matter. So, in other words, here I've got a proportional increase in the price of cloth, this P dash C, and a proportional increase in the price of food, that P dash F. Yeah? And what happens here, of course, is that basically the wage goes up from W1 to W2, but it's in the same proportion. So in terms of the real wage, nothing happens. And this is this is just a simple nominal versus real kind of thing, right? So if prices go up by 10%, wages go up by 10%, the real wage being earned doesn't change at all. Okay, because the real wage doesn't change, there's no change in the allocation of labour between the two sectors. So that's the first case. As I said, that's not necessarily all that interesting because essentially nothing happens. It's just a nominal change, but no real change. The one that we really want to focus on is the situation if the relative prices change. In other words, they don't go up by the same percent. Uh, so here is an example, I'm going to change the price of cloth and I'm going to assume only the price of cloth rises. So what we're going to get, as we've got in the previous diagram, is we're going to get a shift up, to the right, whatever, of um, the this um, demand for labour curve here. And that's simply a fact that the price has gone up. Okay, But if nothing happens in terms of the price of food, then, that, then the price of food... Um, doesn't change, then this curve is not going to change. Okay. What that leads to, of course, is it does lead to an increase in wages. Yeah. As we shift out to the right, we get a new equilibrium between the two sectors of this W uh, two. But and this, I guess, is the important thing here. So the wage rises, but if you look at the the change or the increase in the price of the good. It's that vertical distance there. I've called it W2, but that's, I'm not suggesting that the wage um, is going to equal W2 dash, but that's the that's the proportional increase in the price. So what's happened here is the the wage has gone up, but not as much as what the price has gone up. Yeah, so it's uh, and this is going to obviously affect the real wage between the two sectors. As you can see, though, as the price of cloth goes up, uh, more labour is put into cloth. In other words, more more workers uh, produce more cloth, and so it's going to change. Obviously, this um, the proportions of labour that go into cloth that increases relative to before, and of course the the labour that's going into food will decrease. Okay, so how do we uh, translate that into our production possibility uh, frontier or our 
production possibility diagram. Well, uh, let's assume this is the original situation with the original price of cloth and the original uh, price of food, and we get that slope. It doesn't matter what the number is, and as a result of that, we produce. Remember where the slope uh, of the relative prices is uh, equal to the um, ratio of the two marginal productivities. Yeah, so we're going to produce initially before the price change that Q1F and Q1C. Now, of course, if the price of cloth is going up, as in our example on the previous slide, this means that, of course, this um, the relative price is going to get um, the line is going to get steeper. Yeah, something like that. Okay, with this P dash C being greater, obviously, than that P C. Again, finding that point of tangency where the two are equal, where the slopes of the production possibility frontier and the relative prices are equal, we're now obviously going to get a change in, um, in the relative production of the two sectors. As you can see, uh, which we had on the previous slide, the amount of cloth that's going to be produced is going to increase uh, and the quantity of food is going to decrease. So how's the distribution of income changed? Well, uh, funnily enough, well not funnily enough, it's not, that's not funny at all, um, but the effect on the land is ambiguous. One of the things we haven't got in here is demand or consumption, yeah? So it actually depends on what people are buying. So all that we can say at this stage is that we know for a fact that certain things have happened. We know, for example, that the real wage uh, in terms of cloth has fallen. Remember the price of cloth rose by more than the nominal wage rose. That was the one we had a couple of slides ago. Um, but again, and I, well maybe I can go back to it now, but the real wages in terms of food have risen and that's, sorry for jumping around a bit, you can see the real wage in terms of um, food has gone up, yeah, even though the real wage of cloth has gone down. There we are. So, of course, the, the ultimate effect, whether people are better off or worse off, depends on the relative importance of each budget, of each um, product in, in, the, in terms of the budget. So, how much people spend on cloth or how much their preferences are for cloths versus uh, food. So, we can't definitively say anything necessarily about labour. However, we can say something about the, the owners of the other factors of production. In terms of the capital owners, remember capital was specific um, to cloth. So the effect in terms of um, on them is unambiguously positive. Remember the real wage that they pay has fallen. The prices that they are earning from, from their cloth has gone up, and it's gone up by relatively more than what the wage has gone up. So they're better off, definitely. The effect on landowners, remember that the, the owners of the factor of production in food is also fairly unambiguous, unambiguous. It's going to be negative. The real wage for food has risen, but the relative price of food, in other words, their income, has fallen. So they're going to be worse off. So note what's happened here. And again, we're going to, we're going to sort of take uh, advantage of this uh, in later uh, topics, is that um, where you've got um, an increase in the price of a particular good, then the owners of the factors of production in that uh, sector is, are going to benefit, and the owners of the factor of production in the other good are going to be negatively affected. So that's really all that this video was, was about, was seeing how as you change the relative prices and therefore you change the relative wage, it's going to have some effect, even though we're not quite sure what yet, uh, on labour and the relative labour in, in food and uh, in cloth, but it's the other factor of production that's going to be affected, that's definitely going to be affected in one direction or the other. What we're going to do now, of course, in the subsequent videos, we're going to uh, take this result and we're obviously going to then bring in trade, uh, international trade, and see what happens in that situation.